Welcome back to The Express. Today we're exploring culture, creativity, and cuisine on the downtown east side. But what's a neighborhood special without some fitness? Rada Yoga and Eatery is all about the mind, body, and soul. Begin by closing your eyes and just focusing on your breath, relaxing into the moment. When the downtown east side is looking for a place of peace, they come here to Radha Yoga and Eatery. We really try to be accessible to everyone, from people who have um, a familiarity with Swami Radha's teachings and are interested in yoga as a spiritual practice. Let's inhale the arms up. Generally, people are kind of amazed and astounded that we exist, because from the street, you can't really see what's going on up here. And as you come up the stairs and see the warm and inviting space and realize that there's just this inviting, healthy, soul-satisfying, connected place. Radha provides nourishment for the body in another way too, as a vegan eatery. Our menu is delicious and hearty and is based on whole foods. We always try and stay as seasonal as possible. We, we do change our menus regularly. Um, we always prioritize local ingredients, all of our produce and dry goods try to be organic, obviously. I don't want to say we're 100%, but we're, you know, 85, 90% organic. Robert, who moved to Vancouver specifically to work at Rada, does not use refined products. All flowers and grains are in their whole form and everything is made fresh in the house. I think people are, are very pleased that the food is healthy, health supportive and also interesting and innovative. And, you know, there's, there's always this tendency to think that healthy food has to be sort of bland or boring, you know, and, and that's, that's really not true. It's a different experience for me being a vegan. I usually have set boring menus that I make myself and it's really hard to make complicated, tasty things for yourself on a regular basis. So it's a real treat to come here and have a really special meal. For Justine, Radha not only became one of her favorite restaurants, but one that made her yoga practice complete. Coming in to do karma yoga, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. I just knew that I wanted to be here. That's precisely the experience staff here at Radha want customers to leave with. And this studio plays a big part in what makes the neighborhood so diverse. I think there's a certain vibrancy here. There's a certain, you know, edginess and grittiness to it as well, but I think that it's a community where all, people from all walks of life and all stages of life, you know, there are families, there are old people, there are young people who live here as well. So it's a, it's a pretty, you know, you sort of get Vancouver in a nutshell just within a few blocks of here. I think we've been very welcomed in the community and the one thing that strikes me the most is the diversity of the neighborhood, how there's people from all walks of life doing all sorts of things and you have to just sort of have an open mind and an open heart. In the downtown east side, I'm Melanie Panetta for The Express. Prada Yoga and Eatery wants everyone in the community to be able to use their space, so they've devised a pay-as-you-go plan for their classes and menu items. There's plenty of support in this community, and as Kendall Harris found out, giving the gift of employment is a powerful thing. Potluck Cafe and Catering is a business with roots planted firmly in its own backyard. Potluck's mission as a social enterprise is to create training and employment opportunities for downtown Eastside residents with, with barriers to traditional employment. And it's also to improve and make uh, affordable food, safe food, accessible into the downtown Eastside neighborhood for residents who live and work down here. Our business activities really sustain our ourselves just like any other business and it also is an investment into our community program so when people choose potluck catering they're also supporting some profit making to then put back into the 30,000 free meals that we serve out of this potluck cafe every year to neighborhood residents and how did the community kitchen go last night too? Community kitchen went great. Excellent. Johnny Perry is the chef in charge of this kitchen and he also works closely with employees supporting them with anything they may need. What I really enjoy about it is um, seeing people succeed in their own way and seeing people um, that have maybe been here for a year or two or three sort of come out of their shell and really become um, self-sufficient and really um, able to better their lives and, and whatever that may be. And, and we certainly uh, allow people to measure that on, in their own way. You know, we're all successful in our own way. 
And Potluck is successful in its own way, a thriving social enterprise that's been giving back to the community for almost a decade. There you go. All the revenues generated from our corporate catering go back to support all the, all the programs that we do. We're not government funded. Uh, we're pretty much, you know, 95% self-sufficient. Feeding people is a, is a fundamental need of life. And, um, you know, if you can stabilize people's housing and you can stabilize people's bellies with quality, safe food, then you've laid a foundation for the next journey or, you know, things that people might need or want to, to improve in their lives. And with every meal, every day, Potluck continues to set an example of what a well-run business can do. Create a great product, make money, and make a difference. From Vancouver's downtown east side, I'm Kendall Harris for The Express. For more information about the Potluck Cafe or their training employment program, or to make a donation, you can visit their website. Up next on the Express Flamenco 101. Women Shadows Contest has changed the way people see our community. And the downtown east side comes to life in pictures. 50% of their sale price goes to the calendar vendors, which is really helpful to a lot of these people that are homeless, low-income people. The Express, this is your local voice. Training tips are brought to you by Team Diabetes. More than 9 million Canadians are living with diabetes, including my older sister. She was diagnosed with type 1 when she was just 3 years old. I want to find a cure. She's my inspiration to run a half marathon in Iceland with Team Diabetes. The only problem is, I hate running. I've got my new shoes on and I'm ready to learn to run. Perfect, and while you're at it, it's good to pick up a new sport bra as well. Okay, I probably don't need to show you that. Well, since you don't have much run experience. Or any. <laughs> and this is your first long distance event, I've designed a program for you to get you started. And it's just gonna start off with walk, run, okay? Okay. Let's go. Okay, I'll catch up, I've got 10 months. You want to start off really safely and really slowly in the beginning. So you're going to start off with 30 seconds of running and four and a half minutes of walking. And Toby says do that for at least 20 minutes. Come on, let's go. Put the phone away. Baby steps, come on. Baby steps. How many baby steps equals 22K? To donate or sign up, go to teamdiabetes.ca. For Shaw TV, I'm Johanna Ward. What you're really giving is a way out. Welcome back to the Express. We're taking a close look at the downtown east side and we're here at Uma taking a little flamenco. Flamenco is an art form that originated in southern Spain. It's a very strong dance. It's danced by both men and women. And if you go to Spain, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing the, the level of, um, of rhythm and of mastery that, that they have over there. It's starting to come over more to North America. The first thing is to be really strong, right? Okay. Because strength in the core is the absolute foundation of both strength in dance, but also strength in your life. Be a deep, you know, like lift your chin a little. Ole, you got it. <laughs> if you want to take a class with Kelty, you can visit her website for more dates. 
We're looking at all the good things here on the downtown east side, including some of the most creative citizens. The bleak images people have long associated with the downtown east side have been replaced by pictures of hope, joy, and love, thanks to the Hope and Shadows calendar. The Hope and Shadows contest has changed the way people see our community. 16-year-old Alicia Walker, who's lived in the downtown east side all of her life, is one of the 200 residents who was given a camera to take photos of the neighborhood. When the calendar first came out, I thought that it was just going to be a contest for fun, but when I saw that so many people were impacted by it, so many people felt like they had a purpose and giving us a chance to shine. Today she's getting an award for this photo, a picture she took of her sister and a friend. I wanted it to be in the center of what I think what I think the center of the downtown east side is, which is Oppenheimer Park. And they were kind of walking, holding hands, and they're really good friends, and I thought that that is something that really represents community. It gives people a lot of pride, a lot of confidence in themselves and also in their community. The winner is Peter Thompson for I Can Make a Difference. The cover of this year's calendar comes from a street vendor who used his nephew as inspiration. He was all excited when I told him that. He was invited and in that he'd probably win. He set it up with a, with a really nice message, I can make a difference. Not only brings the community together, but it brings people from the outside, like the, to know the, the people from downtown Eastside, what they're like and how they help each other. 50% of their sale price goes to the calendar vendors, which is really helpful to a lot of these people, the homeless, low-income people. Almost 200 people will receive sales training over the next month and will be out on the streets selling the calendars until Christmas. I'm Bianca Salterbeck in Vancouver for The Express. This year there's added incentive to buy the 2010 calendar. Some of the photos are in color. The whole collection will be shown at Havana Cafe on Commercial Drive the whole month of December. And if you want your calendar, you can go to their website for details. There's plenty of events happening on the downtown east side and that's where we're focusing our Express Spotlight. Touchstone Theatre celebrates their 35th anniversary with this tale of a woman with a repressive father, a young lover, a husband, and a thrilling new hobby, playing with poison. Spend the evening at a live art auction featuring works by Vancouver's top artists. This season's hottest party will feature local artists and live music with proceeds benefiting Friends for Life, a society that supports individuals with life-threatening illnesses. This theatrical performance invites audiences to participate and explore how we are interconnected and woven together. The barrier between the performer and audience breaks down and offers a voluntary and exciting way for the audience to become part of the performance. There's one more event happening this weekend called The Good Drive, where families can donate their household goods to those in need in this community. I'm Melanie Panetta filling in for Johanna Ward and from everyone on The Express, thank you for watching our Downtown Eastside Special. We leave you now with a look at the local art scene.